Hey everybody, what's up? It's Dave from Quarterbash. Um, yeah, uh, I just made $100,000 on eBay because of the band Pitchfork. Um, it's true. I, I know that sounds like a real clickbaity title, like I just made $100,000 on eBay, but it is true. Kind of. Um, it's going to take some explaining. Just give me a minute. I'll come back and explain it. Okay, so I just made $100,000 in sales on eBay, which means I just passed my 100,000th dollar in sales on eBay in the entire time I've been selling on eBay. So yes, I have made $100,000 on eBay, not in one day or in one week or with one sale. I didn't sell a Pitchfork record for $100,000, but it's still a big milestone and it's a pretty big deal. I'm kind of excited about it. It was very cool to see the counter keeps track of your sales turn from five digits to six digits. I didn't even know for a long time that there was a counter keeping track of my sales, but uh, I discovered that a few years ago and started watching it and just noticed as I was starting to do the channel that my sales were reaching up to a hundred thousand. They were getting into the, they were getting up into the upper 99s. And it was going to cross over. So I started doing screenshots so I could put up this. Hopefully there's been a graphic here that shows, uh, an animated, you know, GIF or something of the number switching over to over a hundred thousand. So here's how this works. And here's why Pitchfork is involved because it gives me an opportunity to tell a story I like to tell and show off something I like to show off. And you know what? It's also going to give me an opportunity to give away a Pitchfork record. So if you stay to the end of this video, I will show you how you could win this copy of this Pitchfork Saturn Outhouse 7 inch. If that's your thing, if you get a record coming your way, it'll be fun. All right. Here we go. I love this band Pitchfork. When this record came out, it was on a label called Nemesis Records, and I was buying anything that came out on the label. I just assumed they were always going to put out hardcore stuff that I liked. I was listening to a lot of straight edge hardcore at the time. They put out some records that I really dug. This record's a lot different than that. In fact, when I first got it, I wasn't sure what to think of it. It has one song has bagpipes on it. It's just it's really, really kind of odd. It was ahead of its time, certainly, but after a while, I began to realize this record was fantastic. Like, really, really cool. The music is just great. It's creative. Um, if I'm not going to play it here. Just go. You can check it. I'm sure somewhere else on YouTube there's a video where you can hear what the Pitchfork Saturn Outhouse 7-inch sounds like. And I remember my friend Boris told me, that Pitchfork record is really good. Now, I had it in my collection. I'd listened to it a few times. I decided I liked one of the songs. But I wasn't sure what I thought about the rest of it. I wasn't hot on the record yet. I just hadn't quite caught up to it. So I'm over at Boris's one day and he's playing, he's playing this record. And I said, is this, is this Pitchfork? And he said, yeah, this record is amazing. I sat there and listened to it with him. And it was one of those things where you listen to a band with another person and you see them enjoy it. And it sort of opens up what there is about that band that you maybe hadn't recognized before. Haven't had this experience a lot of times, but I definitely had it with this. The minute I loved it, I loved it forever, and I couldn't get enough. I wish there were 10 Pitchfork LPs, but unfortunately there's not. There's this 7-inch with three songs, and then there's an LP called Eucalyptus. Now, when that came out, I bought it immediately, brought it home, opened it up. It's black vinyl. I didn't even know at that point in time that there was colored vinyl, but I found out shortly after that that there was an orange vinyl version of it. Some say clear yellow, whatever I call it. I've always called it the orange vinyl version, but mine was on black. So whatever. I really, really loved that record. Like there, there's a song called Rana on that record that I just think is one of the greatest songs ever recorded. It's just good. It's just good. So I had that record for years, but I always in the back of my head, I was like, you know, for my record collection, I want that yellow vinyl. I want that orange vinyl copy. So around the mid nineties, I started doing a lot more record trading through like classified ads in the back of magazines. There was maximum rock and roll had classifieds in the back. You could trade records. And I got pretty heavy into buying and selling rare vinyl, punk rock and hardcore stuff. Mostly that was my specialty. That's what I knew. That's what I like to listen to. So that's what I understood. So then this thing called eBay came along. People started selling online and I had done a little bit of record trading through message boards, but I wasn't comfortable with eBay at all. It was just a new thing. It took me a little while, but 
I would watch eBay and I'd see what other people were doing. And as eBay got larger and people discovered it, I started seeing more and more, you know, punk vinyl being sold on there. So after a long period of time, someone lists a Pitchfork Eucalyptus LP on orange vinyl for $30. At the time, that seemed like a lot of money to pay for that record. So, you know, seeing someone that has this Pitchfork record and they want 30 bucks for it. So I'm hemming and hawing. And it's May of 1999, and I decide, you know what? I'm going to have to join eBay. I'm going to have to sign up for an eBay account so I can buy that record. So I do it. I get set up. I bid on the record. No one bids against me. I get it. $30. I've got a Pitchfork Eucalyptus on orange vinyl coming my way. So I go to work. I'm working at a Kinko's in Seattle. And my boss at the time is a guy named John Kessler. John Kessler, totally cool dude. He runs a company called Infinity Sauces. He makes this awesome hot sauce. Go check that out also, but that's another thing altogether. I'm gonna tell a story about Pitchfork. So John had gone to school with the guys from Pitchfork in California, in uh, San Diego or somewhere around there. And he said, you paid $30 for a Pitchfork LP? Like he was completely like surprised. I said, yeah, and I, I want it. I'm excited. It's coming in the mail. He said, 30 bucks, 30 bucks for Pitchfork, the guys I know. Yep. I said, okay. All right. And I thought he just thought, like was saying, you're nuts. Why would anyone spend that much money on a record? But as it turns out, he was, uh, he was thinking about something. So this record that I've been showing you is the Saturn Outhouse 7 inch. Standard copy, black vinyl. As far as I knew, this was the only version of this record that existed, right? I've got Eucalyptus on orange coming, but I've already got one of these on black at home. It's the only one I've ever seen. The next day I come into work, John calls me into the office. He says, I need to talk to you. I go in there. He says, I brought you something. He shows me this. This is not the one I just held up. I know they look the same there's a big difference. Let's look at the back. It's not the, uh, the sticker. It's not that sticker right there that's the difference. The difference is right here above the outhouse. Nothing on this one, my black vinyl copy. On this one, it's hand numbered. This is number 91 out of 100. But there's something else very special about this record. Not just that it's numbered. It's the numbered colored vinyl edition. Clear vinyl, Saturn Outhouse 7 inch. I didn't know this was a thing. So my eyes get real big. I said, where did you get that? He said, well, they were all in black except for these hundred. And in order to get this copy, the numbered clear vinyl copy, you had to go to Rick, the singer's apartment, and knock on the door and say you wanted it. Of course, that's California in the early 90s, and here we are in 1999 in Seattle. You know, there's no there's no way. So, and there would have been no way back then. I didn't know this guy. I didn't know where he lived. I was never going to get this record. I didn't even know it existed. And we didn't have Discogs back then or any kind of place where you could go find out about these pressings. So, John says, I'm giving you this record. If you're going to spend $30 on an orange vinyl copy of the LP, you should have this one condition, you can never sell it. And you know what? I think that's fair. This has stayed in my collection to this day. Now, sadly, I did sell the orange vinyl copy of the Pitchfork Eucalyptus LP. This is my copy that I've been putting the picture up on screen. Uh, I sold almost all of my record collection and that one went. It was one of the last ones I held on to. In my time of collecting records, I have truly mourned the loss of a record three times. The Moss Icon Silver Bearing Split 12 inch that I used to have. I sold my own personal copy. At one point I had 10 of those. I actually sold them through my record label's distro. I had 10 copies of the Moss Icon Silver Bearing Split 12 inch. Sold them all for like $5 each in the mail. But my own personal copy, I eventually sold that for, I, I think I got 70 or 80 bucks for it. But as soon as that record was gone, I felt this twinge of maybe you shouldn't have done that. And to this day, I have felt that was a mistake. Turning point, it's always darkest before the dawn. LP on clear vinyl. Soon as that thing went out in the mail, 
I was bummed and I'm bummed to this day. I wish I had that record. I'll get it back someday. And the final one is the Pitchfork Eucalyptus LP on Orange. I want my record back. I know who has it. He gets to keep it. I'm going to get one back one of these days, though. So, but this one, John said you can never sell it, so it stays. If I have a record collection of one record, it'll be this one. I won't ever have a record collection of only one record, because there's a few records in my collection that are too personal and can't be sold to anybody. But this one is going to be there the whole time, because that was the deal. It was special. It's really, I think of it as being on loan from John. So John, thank you for this. So what does this got to do with $100,000? So, okay. After I had the buyer account and I started buying records and getting them in the mail, I saw that you could do that. A person could do that. So sometime over the course of the next few months, I started selling my own records on eBay, testing it out. And it went pretty well. And for the first 10 years, probably at least, I sold pretty exclusively just vinyl records on eBay, some CDs, but music, you know, I didn't think about selling other items. I didn't think of eBay that way. And there were good times and bad times with that. Sometimes records would sell for a lot. The market would get kind of flooded. You know, I had long periods of time where I didn't sell anything. Eventually Discogs came along and I discovered that it was a much better selling platform for vinyl. So nowadays that's what I do, Discogs. But by then I had started selling a ton of other stuff on eBay. So now I do all kinds of reseller activity on eBay. But if it weren't for needing to buy that Pitchfork Eucalyptus LP on eBay in 1999, I wouldn't have signed up and then I wouldn't have started selling. I wouldn't have had the experience. So because of Pitchfork, I started an eBay account and I made over $100,000 on eBay. How do you do what I did and make $100,000 on eBay? It's simple. Sell on eBay for 20 years and sell at least $5,000 a year each of those years. Okay, I realize that's not the best advice. You should probably just sell a whole bunch of stuff as fast as possible and make $100,000. Now that I've made $100,000 over the course of 20 years, I'm thinking I'm going to try to make the second $100,000 a lot faster. But uh, if I keep doing this channel... Oh, we'll follow along with that and see how long it actually takes me. So thank you for coming this long. We're at the end of the video now. And like I promised, the giveaway. This Pitchfork Saturn Outhouse 7-inch, the one that's on black, this is not out of my personal collection. I got a hold of this record specifically to be able to talk about this record in this video. So it's in good condition. No real scratches or anything. The cover is, is pretty decent. It's got a couple little bends, but... Yeah, it's in good shape. The only thing it doesn't have is a lyric sheet, and I don't have one to put in here. So it's going to go like this, vinyl and cover. I'm going to send this record to one of the people who watches this video. I will choose a random comment from this video in a week. Let's just say seven days from the day this video goes up. Uh, all you have to do is comment with, tell me your favorite song. It makes sense, right? I already had people do favorite band in the uh, the 100 subscriber celebration. So let's say favorite song. And it doesn't have to be your favorite song. Don't don't get bogged down in the question. Just make a comment, write the name of a song. That's it. I am going to say this, though. I'm going to pick a winner of someone who actually puts a comment of a legitimate song that I can go listen to in the comments. So just enter once, one song, one comment. I will uh, I'll use a random comment selector. And uh, I will send you this Pitchfork Saturn Outhouse 7-inch in the mail if you win. All right. That's fun, right?